I love my brother. I have always loved my brother. When you're a little kid and you're going to the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, and here he comes, tall, blonde, every woman in the place going absolutely nuts for him, I'd say at one point he was my hero. You know, there's this regular jilted and lazy trope commentators in wrestling will use. You'll hear them say, the prodigal son, and I have to wonder, I'm curious, who out there listening actually understands the morals and the implications in Luke 15, 11 in that parable? There's two brothers. One does everything right. One works very hard, tries to keep his family whole. The other goes abroad, whores about, and makes every conceivable wrong choice you could possibly make. But it's the first brother who is equally in the wrong because he has an expectancy from the father for all his good deeds, and none of it matter. The father loved them the same. I've sat on enough couches telling my story to know which brother I am. I'm good with it. And this notion of brother versus brother, of, of natural versus nightmare, it's all very marketable, it's all very romantic, albeit not very accurate. What's accurate is that this match is generation versus generation. I am not here to kill Dustin Rhodes. I'm here to kill the Attitude Era. My entire lot, my whole class of peers, has been compared to these gilded late 90s through the early 2000s for over a decade, and it's an utter sham. Sure, you paved the roads for us, but gosh, you set the speed markers at 35 because you are terrified of any of us putting our foot down on the pedal. You mean to tell me some pissant bodybuilder making every match a no DQ, meandering around the crowd, throwing the jib cam at his opponent, compares with a Kenny Okada match? Or some bra and panty spectacular can match up with what the women did last September 1st? Or even Dwayne, as electric as it was, rhyming and raising, was it really better than what Punk said sitting on that stage? <laughs> Listen, I am the least Rhodes of the Rhodes. But they gave me a pair of boots. I've got the basics. When you do something to death, when you ride something to death, that's literally what happens. When that animal can't go anymore and it falls out on the trail and you can feel the tension in its eyes and its fluttered breaths of panic and it knows it's going to die and it wants to die. You don't just leave it because you love it. You pull from the hip. You roll your fingers on the steel of the chamber. You pull the hammer back. You do not anticipate the recoil and you blow it away. Like I said, I love my brother.